Today I'm going to show you how to get started with Google Shopping Ads on a live Shopify store with a live Google Ads account. And I'll start with a Performance Max campaign, but we'll also set up some standard shopping campaigns as well. This video is part of a series where I'll show you how I manage Google, Amazon, and Microsoft Ads accounts for this live e-commerce store. So once we're done setting up these campaigns today, you can check back later for more videos of me reviewing and optimizing this ad account. So all right, let's get started. So before I begin, if you're new to this channel, my name is Austin. I run a small Google Ads agency here in Indiana. We work primarily with e-commerce store owners that are doing between a million and um, up to 20 million a year in revenue. We're making these videos to help store owners who want to do some of this stuff themselves, or maybe they have an in-house person that needs to learn a couple things about Google Ads. So we provide a lot of free content and even templates. So if you'd like to learn more uh, please subscribe to our channel and we've got plenty of more content for you to learn from. So, all right, so for this store, let's get started. Um, today we're gonna do the shopping campaign setup. Like I said, so if you don't already have a product feed ready in your Google Merchant Center account, you'll want to go back, set that up, and then return to this video when you're done. I've already got that done and so I'm gonna get started with the ads. And this, by the way, is for our live Shopify shop, kushcushion.com. Uh, this is a live store you can shop on. It has, uh, we're selling these seat cushions that go on top of this Tolex st style bar stool. And I don't have any campaign set up yet in the account, but I'm in the uh, Google ads interface in the far left dark gray column set to, I have ticked into all campaigns and then in the light gray column, I've ticked into campaigns. And from here, I'll just hit the blue plus button and then I won't use this guide um, right now. I'm just gonna click into create a campaign without a goals guidance, then performance max, because that's what I know I want. And then I don't want to use add to carts as a conversion goal. These are the goals that the performance campaign will optimize towards. And I don't want other, because I don't know what that is. So these other two phone calls and then purchases I do want, they have a little warning triangles because they're, the tags are inactive, but I'm not done setting this account up, so I'll finish setting those up later, but I'll use those for now. And then here in the very bottom, I have the Merchant Center feed that I've created for this store selected, and I'll just hit continue. And I generally name my campaigns with my initials plus a bar, and then the name of whatever the campaign is. So you can do whatever you'd like for that. And I'm just gonna call it two, because I have a second one ready to go that I've been working on. But from here, I'll just set up a budget. It doesn't matter what you use to begin with. I'm not gonna choose um, conversions under bidding because I want conversion value because this is an e-commerce store that records value in the form of revenue. And I won't tick this set a target return on ad spend because if I were, for example, to initially give it something like even uh, modest, like 100% target return on ROAS, it might not actually get much traffic because it might not know that it can achieve that. But if I just leave that ticked off and let it stay to conversion value only, then I'm likely to get more traffic from the get-go. This customer acquisition section, I'm not going to use this on this case. This is to bid higher on acquiring new customers versus old customers, but I don't have any new or old customers that have acquired from this Google Ads account to begin with. So I'm just gonna leave that unticked. And then I'll hit next and set the location to where I'm at. And then the languages, you can either leave it to whatever it sets to default, or you can put in all languages. What this means is if the user's browser is set to, for example, Arabic, then it'll show ads to that those people. But if their browser setting is set to English, it'll use that, uh, it'll show ads to those people. I'll just let it be all languages for now. And then under more settings, I'm not actually going to change any of this except for the final URL expansion. I don't want this on, and I'll explain more in detail why I don't want that on later, but just for now, I'll turn that off. Okay, and then the next step is to set up ads, um, or sorry, an asset group, and I'm gonna call my asset group um, all products. Asset groups are used to divide up different products with different into different ads. So for example, I could, use a selection of products. So let's just say I wanted to use, and you can filter by a lot of different things, but I'll filter by um, item ID. I could, for example, only show these products in this campaign. 
and perhaps these all have something in common. And then in that case, let's just say these are all the square black vinyl cushions. And then if I, if I only wanted to show those, I could just name this something like square black um, vinyl cushions. But I'm not going to do that yet, so I'll just leave it at all products. And then I'll leave this at all products. And then next is to fill out add copy, which I've already gotten going in another tab. Um, and I've taken add copy from the website and from some keyword research and add copy writing that I did before. We have another video on how to write ad copy and to, to do keyword research. So at least for this video, I won't go into that, but you can check out the link above for our other tutorial on writing ad copy. In short, what I've done is I've taken the what the product is, so just the most basic description of what the product is, and made that as the headline. Unlike standard shopping campaigns, Performance Max campaigns place your product ads in a number of different online placements automatically. So for example, YouTube, uh, Gmail, regular search ads, display, and then the Discover app ad placements. So that's the benefit of using a Performance Max campaign over a standard shopping ad campaign. Um, but I'll talk a little more about standard ad shopping campaign benefits next. So for this one, I've got everything ready to go. I have all my headlines, uh, short headlines, long headlines, and then descriptions. And I took most of this from one, my research from before, but also just from the website itself. So for example, I took this headline and used that as ad copy. I took some parts of this and paraphrased it. Um, and then I even took some of the customer testimonials. For example, this middle one I took and then I just paraphrased it um, right here to fit into the available character limit. And then the same thing with this set of this little review call out. Over 30,000 seat cushions sold, 300 plus five star ratings. I took that and place it as my last headline too. All right, so then I'll just finish this off with the business name. And then site links I'll make later. Okay. And then the call to action, I do want this to be shop now because this is an e-commerce store. And then for the last section, audience signal, I'll hit create an audience signal. And then I don't have any audience lists. So for example, remarketing lists from this website yet because I haven't been running ads to it. So what I'll do is I'll make an audience signal and use keywords that I think will be the best keywords for this account. So I'll click new custom segment and then top keywords again to give it a name. And then I'll take from some research I did before what I believe will be the top keywords. So I'll just copy those and then paste them in here. And then I ought to put in more, so I'll come back later and add in more keywords, but for now I'll just start with those. And then I'll hit save. And that'll get me started. That's not very much, but we'll do more work on audiences later. So I'll hit next. And now Google will check for errors. Okay, so I have no errors. If you do have errors, you can go back and fix those. Typically errors come from the ad images, but this time I don't have any errors, so I'll just click publish campaign. Okay, so now we have a Performance Max campaign set up. Performance Max campaigns are great for most product categories. They're a good way to get started quickly, but they don't always work well, I find, with unusual products or newly invented products. So something that you might have to explain in depth to a customer for them to understand what it is you're selling. If you are, on the other hand, selling something like t-shirts or iPhone cases or tools or electronics, those things are pretty clear what they are. So if um, a user were to search for one of those things on Google, Google Ads with your Performance Max campaign can generally match your ad to the right search query. Now, that's a Performance Max campaign. We'll get started with the second type now, which is a standard shopping campaign. And so I'll do the same thing. I'll go back to shopping campaigns, campaign, campaign, um, and then I'll hit the blue plus button, then new campaign. And then on this occasion, I will click on sales. Nope. And then I'll click on create a campaign without goals guidance. And then I'll just select shopping. And this is a standard shopping campaign. So I'll remove these that I don't want, just like before. Make sure that I have the right Merchant Center account selected. And you can see that Google is trying to guide me into making another Performance Max campaign, but I'll click on standard shopping campaign. Continue. 
Okay, and then I'll name this one the same, my initials plus a bar and then just shopping. And I'll start with manual CPC and then I'll put in just whatever budget I'm comfortable with. And then for priority, I'll leave it on low. This doesn't matter at the times, uh, so I'll just leave that. And then to start with, I don't wanna be on the search network. That shows the ads in more places, across more placements apart from Google search results. I wanna keep the campaign spending as little money as possible to get a sale from the beginning, so I'll turn that off. That's a good option when you've started getting sales at a good return and you wanna find more traffic, so I'll just leave that off. And then for locations, I'm gonna leave it on United States, but I'll click down into this and I'll set it to people in regular, regularly in your targeted locations. I didn't have this option in the Performance Max campaign, but in standard shopping campaigns I do. And what this means is that if someone is physically in our target location, the United States, then they are eligible to see an ad. Whereas if I chose this one, presence or interest, it's that second part or interest that could cause an ad to show to someone who lives or is in a foreign country, but is showing interest in the United States as a location. That could be somebody who's traveling abroad but lives in the United States who shows an interest in the United States, or it could be somebody who permanently lives in a foreign country and just happens to read news about the United States or visit American-based websites frequently. I don't want that, so I'm just going to use the second option, and then I'll close that back up. Start and end dates don't matter. I'm going to do the same as before. I'll do an all products ad group, and then I'll start with a really low bid of, let's say, 35 cents, and then I'll hit create campaign. Okay, and so here's my first shopping campaign. And right from the beginning, I can check to make sure that I have the right products in there. And then if I want to, I can click on the plus button to subdivide them. So if I wanted to, for example, if I knew that this set of products were the top sellers, I could put those into their own section and let's say just increase the bids slightly. And now I have separate product segmentations in this campaign. So I've got the individual ones that I just chose, and then I have everything else. And this is a way to set bids differently based on different products. I'm actually just gonna clear that out because I don't want that right now. So I'll just hit clear all and then save. Okay, and then I have my shopping campaign set up. If you're unsure of which campaign to start with, try a standard shopping campaign first and give it a small budget with low bids. Then after running that for just a day, you'll be able to check back in the search terms report to see what types of searches people were entering into Google before clicking on your shopping ads. I'll show you an example right here from old campaigns with this shop. You can see, for example, under search terms, and by the way, I'm over here in search terms uh, in the light gray column. So here I can see what searches user performed on Google before clicking my ads. I can see the number of clicks that I received from those searches, and then I can also see the cost of those clicks. You can't have this level of detail on search terms in a Performance Max campaign, and that's why I recommend starting with a standard shopping campaign if you're just getting started. One last thing to note is that if you're running a Performance Max campaign at the same time as a standard shopping campaign, like I am here, all of the traffic will go to the Performance Max campaign instead of the standard shopping campaign because Performance Max campaigns always take precedence. So if you're running both of these at the same time, don't be surprised if your standard shopping campaign isn't getting any traffic. And uh, I would recommend just pausing the Performance Max campaign from the start. All right, that's all it takes to get started with Performance Max and standard shopping campaigns on Google. What I've set up today is just a starting point, and I'll certainly make more changes to these as time goes by, so please keep checking back for more videos on this ad account. For more free content, templates, and guides on search engine marketing, please make sure to sign up for our newsletter using the link below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel and check out the next video in this series to my right where I will set up more ads for this shop. Thank you for watching.